Development, Deputy Political Leader, Interim of course, elections in September. Nice to be with you all tonight. And tonight we are your hosts of the front line, usually Janice Lemon Preaky, who is our PRO. You know her, you're familiar with her face. She is not here tonight, and I think most of you would know by now that she has taken ill and she is in the hospital. And I want to take this time to send all my warm wishes, my love, Janice, get better. I saw you today. You're a fighter. Even in your sickness, you were calm, yeah. relaxed. I know you were in a little bit of pain, but you're a fighter, like I said, and I, I'm just praying for your speedy recovery. Yes, and on behalf of the PB family and, and, and all of your fans um, and well wishers, I mean, they sent a lot of love throughout the, the social feed today. We got a lot of calls. Um, a lot of them are concerned for you and the pep me um the pep family felt a lot of love today and we just really want to give you your husband and your family, you know, our prayers and our thoughts and our well wishes. And we hope to make you proud tonight because frontline is your lifeblood. And we really, really, really wanna bring it really good tonight. So Yes, this is Janice's baby. Well, we started off with Janice and yes, Tony. Yes. And then, you know, we had you as guests and then I popped yeah. in a couple of times. So tonight's I really hope to make you proud, Janice. We're not following your very exquisite format, <laughs> but we do what we do. We added our yeah. own flavor to your show, and I hope again that you'll be very proud of us. So, yes. tonight the topic was question and answers, and actually Janice and I were going to address many questions that people have for the PEP for our executive. I still to this day see questions asking, who is the PEP executive? Are you serious? Who is the PEP executive? Philip is a one-man show. I mean, you all know that we were, we were known as the, the people who was liming under the mango tree in January 2017. Exactly. That's, that's what we were known for. You know, the mango tree movement. And, and we got our kicks for But I mean, um, we have a full team. I mean, Philip tags from now. They are always like about 20 emboldened names. You know, I don't know where to start. Exactly. I don't know how many times we need to say it again, but I will say it again. That was the, 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 the one of the topics we were going to address tonight. We have an executive team. We have a chairman, myself, or all interim, our deputy political leader, one, of one them. and two. Our yeah. second deputy political leader is Dilworth. Braffit. Braffit, yes. yes. I always get, um, yes, and good, <laughs> good, good, well, good morning, good night, Dilwood, wherever you are. Yes, good. Yeah. It's what time? It's eight. It's good morning, good Dilwood. Morning, Have Dilwood. a great day at work today. He's based in South Korea. Um, our PRO, Janice Lemon Kirky, our head of PEP Media, our head of party mobilization, Shari Wilson, our head of, well, Dilwood also holds on right now for the head of membership. We have a deputy chairman. Sean Sunarine, who was just here, you will see him on Facebook as Trini Mamu. So, actually, even though that was the topic tonight, I'm just touching on it briefly. Yes, there's an executive team. I don't know if you all think that Philip does this all by himself. I mean, a one man, pro I know he has done plenty one man protester, but to, to actually run a political party takes people. We haven't made it for a year plus on just the steam of one lone man. I mean, he has done. A lot, eh? yeah. but we have a team here that is behind him, supporting him, keeping this party afloat, managing it with whatever little we have. But we are going, and we're going very strong. And Philip, I thank you for that wherever you are, and thank you for the intro music. He gave us some intro music tonight, and also thank you for the opportunity to do what we are doing here. Yeah, because all of us here, we we, we literally um, Pep is just kind of like the common thread that pulled us together from. You realize that, and this, I, I call us the misfits with a conscience. And, and if, you, if you watch the heavy, hard-hitting social media threads that are there, and I will, you know, I really want to declare people like Rohan San, Misty Autumn Day, Dave Lux, they are real people. We have to pick them yeah. up. <laughs> you know, um, Ryan Chin Sang, um, our head of youth. Uh, these people are ones who 
sacrifice their time and, and they, 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 they added to our vision and they are real people that you interact with. You have the head of the advisory council, Kenneth Luke. Um, so when you want the data and you want the information um, for all the pertinent issues and, and I think right now, um, say for example, as, as we have Janice, you know, in Westshore tonight, um, say, say healthcare. You know, any any and, and, and you know, healthcare is one of our five pillar policies um, that PEP, the Progressive Empowerment Party. There are a lot of peps coming up all over. Yes. You're not seeing that. Yes, a lot right? of Progressive Empowerment Party. Progressive wannabes. Empowerment Party, that's who we are. We are the Orange Army. Anything else is, you know, we leave them behind. As we. As we touched on the executive, and like Sarah said, in honor of Janice tonight, as much as we were going down that entire question and answer segment, I hope you are happy knowing who the executive is. Save your questions for next time. But we do want to touch a little bit about healthcare, on healthcare today. It, it touched I, us. It touched it, us. It, it, it touched us today. It literally stopped us in our tracks. We, 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 we had our plans. Everybody had their their weekly goals because you know we meet here every Saturday. The executive meets here every single Saturday to our, you know, detriment to our family, our social life, our, you know, our sleep. Um, but we are here every Saturday and uh, today we just got a message and we got a phone call and ev everything stopped. And then... It did because you immediately. I remember I was up, I, I'm never usually up that hour, I was right? Up after three, and I saw her post on Facebook. Oh my god, I was up till after three, too. Yeah, and I saw the comments coming down, and immediately you go through the thought process of okay, one, yeah. where is she? Is she okay? Because yeah. you have to think, is she in public? Is she private? You, you find out she's in private, you get a sense of relief because you know if you're thinking that she's in the public. One, she's probably not going to be attended to that hour of the morning. Mm -hmm. And we literally need to call everybody and each, each, each resource that you know. And it's like whatever cobweb of a family that you have and you pull and you remember yeah, your second cousin married to somebody yeah. who is a doctor down the road. That Those are the thoughts that come into your mind when you hear that someone you care about is on their way to a public health care system. But, you know, she was, we, we were told that, you know, she was, um you know, in a private institution. And, um... Which is both very fortunate, I'm, I'm happy, and it's also sad at the same time yeah. that that is the reality of the situation. And while I'm so very happy, Janice, that you, that you are t being taken care of in the best way that I, I ever imagined, because yeah. when I visited her today, I honestly had a out-of-body experience. I said, is this what like, healthcare is supposed to be like? Is this mm -hmm. what... Like people smiling, you speak to the receptionist. Oh, oh she's in that room there. Oh, I'm like, okay. it's sad that we can't get the same. Yeah, I mean, experience in I, the public. We had recent experiences. I mean, look at one of our um, foreign based peppers, Carla Jean. She and I, uh, you know, about a month ago, we had our episodes ironically like on the same night, and um, you know, Philip highlighted the vast difference in the experience that she and I had and um, it's just it, it, it took me back and I think when I got the call and they said you know Janice is and so on so it's like can you do front line and I was like yeah for sure I'm doing it and um, because and then when we, when we said you know what we will touch on healthcare it's like it, it literally took me back to that night you know when I was so I was in so much pain and uh, confusion and my loved ones, you know, they were confused too because you didn't know what was going on and the only savior you have, you know, is whoever receives you at casualty. And uh, when you go there and you're literally leaning up on the wall, just as I am now, but you're holding, <laughs> just as <laughs> I am now, I don't know, I don't know, I'm just going to um, maybe, I don't know, maybe it is I am really remembering how it was there and it's like you're holding your head and, you, and the worry and the anxiety that goes along with being sick is one of the things that is just absolutely sickening and unacceptable. It's one of the reasons why the healthcare policy is something that we hold on to and we advocate for because regardless of it, it's not just, and Felicia will, will, will give you the snippet of what it is, but 
in essence is not that we're saying you know poor people deserve health care no that's not it if you even if you have some dollars in a bank that are already robbing you it doesn't mean that from the time you need some assistance some medical assistance that your money has to be held hostage it's not right and it's not fair and um who's your feel free well as you know we have 21 policies and we're touching on health care tonight which is number five on this policy and guys if you have not yet had a look at our policies this is what it looks like yeah both of them are stuck together it's on our facebook page when we have our meetings this saturday you can come collect your flyers distribute to your friends your colleagues yeah. etc because these are the this is the map the road map to undo and redo china and tobago we progressive ideas you can't beat us you can't beat us with that honestly and uh, as we're touching on healthy, I'm going to read this one out for you for those who don't know it. And if you do know it, it's a reminder. First World Healthcare. Build and operate 41 constituency healthcare facilities complete with accident and emergency minor surgery services that would put healthcare within easy reach of all citizens 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Deploy professionally trained call center controlled paramedic ambulance service to fire stations, health centers, and or police stations to allow for emergency responses in under 10 minutes nationwide. Not half an hour, not two hours after, not the next day calling you asking if you still need it. 10 minutes. Monitor the fleets of ambulance via GPS. And Trinidad is so small. And I mean, even if you thought that it was pie in the sky, the night at college, and I both got ill on, you know, wherever we were geographically. I was in Trinidad and she was in U.S. based. She was in and out of the hospital with a full diagnosis and treatment plan. And I still had not seen a doctor. And this, that was... This, I remember you were both in the hospital at the yes. same time. This year. Yes. So when, when, when you all called me and you, well, sorry, you texted and you wanted a check-in, um, I, I, I saw on the thread that Carla Jean was ill and um, she had to, she, she wasn't even home. You know, she had to pull aside on the road because she was, she was driving and the ambulance was able to reach her and uh, she was able to be shuttled there, treated, um, stabilized on her way home and I literally was leaning up like this in Boris Day. Propping up. And I have my and I have my purse and he, and all you know how it is, you know when all you go casualty and you go there, you scope it out and you're like, okay, you know, I feel like something hurts in my hair, so it's like I need two chairs and I need to kinda of stretch because I know I'm gonna be here some time and you you you're trying to figure out how it is that you're gonna settle yourself down for a week. And that is something that we so grateful that Janice didn't have to feel, but we are people who, when we hear these stories, and last week um, on Philip's um, radio show on 104.7, he recounted two stories that came to us. One was from uh, a, a European-based pepper who's, who spoke about the passing of her mother mm -hmm. um, and her treatment in, in, a, in, a, in the South Hospital. And then we also spoke about... Um, Someone in Fatih Ali, she, she, she reached out to us and, and she was trying to get some information and was trying to get some assistance because her husband, you know, fell and hurt his elbow and now he has an infection and that was November last year and come April 2018, the man hand, they did trying to figure out if they need to amputate the hand that had the cut and then now he has a mass infection throughout his body. How is that? How could you comprehend that? And we're not even talking about the affordability that goes along with this healthcare. We're not talking about the level of reception that people, re you know, again, that people receive once they go there. And um, if, if any of these things appeal to you and, and connect with you and you want this message out there, we want you to, you know, just take a pause and share the live so that people could understand you know what we're about and you would realize that we're trying to connect with people out here and there's nothing more universal and understandable that 
healthcare is something that affects us all. And even though we all mortal, because everybody is like, you know, we had a dead and you had a... No, 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 no. That's not what, what it is about. Quality of life is utmost in priority. And as the head of social development, I, I could say that. And when, when we start rolling out and you start coming out and when people start coming on and engaging us in our public forums and talking about, you know, and challenging us on our questions and getting information, is like, this is, that is when we get to unpack, you know, and then also too, we get to learn from you all um, what it is that we miss, what it is that we need to contextualize and we, and we need to edit, you know? So I know I talk in plenty because I, I, I feel in plenty because I felt it as a, you know, as a patient. I felt it as a witness, you know, to a patient and, you know. No, <laughs> you're talking and I'm listening to you and I'm also reading this again because mm -hmm. this week Tony and they on the 411 they actually called me mm -hmm. half 10 in the night as usual late Tony telling me that he needed me to do a voiceover of all 21 policies and they wanted it in half now it took me an hour and a half to do because the dogs are barking in the <laughs> back <laughs> how can I manage but the one thing I did appreciate about the exercise though and thank you for this Tony this is why I did not call you the next day and get on <laughs> was that it actually gave me another opportunity to re-familiarize myself with the policies. And every time I read it, I, uh, I apply it to some new aspect of life. So I'm right. reading this here and I'm, I'm thinking about so many different scenarios. Right. I'm thinking about yours when you just said you had to prop up yourself yeah. and wait in the, in the waiting room, whereas our colleague in, in Florida was attended to yeah. and, and, and discharged within what? Three hours. Within three hours. Three hours. And then I'm thinking about Janice's situation and I'm thinking about other people that I know who have suffered as a result yeah. of something as simple as uh, your, your constituency health care centre yeah. is not equipped to deal with your pain or your sickness. Yeah. And you have to be trying. Imagine, think about this. And I, I, I have a colleague who lives in Mayara and she tells me this. She tells me stories that I'm starting to realize, not realize, but it's a pattern now. Somebody falls ill in Mayaro, the nearest mm -hmm. health center is in, um, in Grandi. Yeah. Now I drive from Mayaro, from Port of Spain to Mayaro sometimes. It's a okay. two and a half hour drive. Right. From Grandi to Mayaro itself is almost an hour, half of that. So imagine you have some kind of emergency. Mm -hmm. And to get assistance, you have to leave from Mayaro in the winding yeah, coconuts yeah. to get to Sandy Grand. And that's provided that you have a vehicle. Provided you have a vehicle. And then provided you have support to actually to organize you. You do have kids that you need to organize and, and, and find a way to get them there. So you understand now why you hear a lot of people when they come in, you know, you're like, why it didn't come sooner? You know, why couldn't we catch this? It's like because they're literally couldn't find the time because i'm telling you if people have pain it's not like they're gonna say oh i'm gonna live with it because i'm looking for a challenge in life no if i get a small paper because then i can fix it i will go and fix it give me the bandage that's the thing the health care center i personally i don't not that i am far from a hospital i live yeah. in belmont so I'm, I'm right there from the port it's being general hospital but it's not that i i don't have access unlike the people of right. Miyaro and Guaya who have to go very far. It's that I take in a day to go by the doctor in the hospital yeah. for something that you don't consider critical. Yeah. Even though I'm not a doctor and I can't diagnose my pain. Yeah. But sometimes there's a level of self diagnosis because you don't want to encounter what you know you're going to encounter. For. And then you get some things it. yeah you, some things you know you have to take days for insurance really. You have to take a day to go and renew your passport. As much as that is literally a half an hour task, you have to take a day. Yeah. You have to take a day to do anything month in the bank. That's a full day. For real. And yeah. you have to take a day to go to the hospital. I broke my toe back in 2016 and I still went and play master. <laughs> I broke my... <laughs> I broke <Shady>. my... <laughs> I didn't know. I uh -huh. thought I sprained my toe and like, we were talking about that camphor thing today. My, um, uh -huh. my aunt told me, put some camphor on it put camphor in it and wrap that up and I went and I play mass week. But you understand now why we hold on more to traditional medicine too, eh? Yeah. And I mean, apart from the fact that these things work, 
but not you, candle, sorry, soft candle. I put soft candle. So don't you put a naphthalene bulb? <laughs> no, no, no. No. I wrapped it up and I went and I played mass. And, and the week after, probably going on two weeks after I broke my toe, I went to the health, health center and I uh -huh. found out, you know, my toe was broken. But um, that's after living with the pain for that long. Huh? Oh, sure. But one of the reasons I did not want to go on it is exactly what I did experience when I went yeah. was I had to sit down in a waiting room wait for a number, wait for the news to come back, go, you're dealing with... And I'm not punging the people who work in the health centers. I met some really nice nurses, and I have to say that it's always... I don't want to say it's touch and go, but you can't class everybody. There's, there are those who really try hard and put the effort to be good, and not good, but nice to their patients yeah. and to, to people... But and I could testify to that yeah. because those you know the doctors who saw me who eventually saw me and you know the nurses who took care of me in Ward Twenty Three, um, thank you very much. Um, I appreciate it. I appreciated all of you. You know we had some laughs and you know in the suffering. Yeah. Right. Because you know somebody balling at twelve o'clock, one o'clock in the morning that they need a Panadol, and they saying, um. Sorry, yeah, love, but they cleaned out the wards of paracetamol and panadol because they don't have stock, so they're all down in casualty. So, think about that, right? And the people who we subject, who usually, if you look at the demographic of the people who suffer in, in a hospital, it tends to be people, you know, of a certain age. So they already have certain challenges. And then you go there, and they're going to suffer some more. And then the, 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 the family that's supposed to be taking care of them, they're busy working. They're busy minding the children. So who is it really offering the care? And the burden goes on the nurses. And as you say, it's a touch-and-go kind of system. And then when you're yeah, you, you in a... i telling you, when you're inside our place, just being in there, I was fortunately next to a window, and I was around pleasant people, people who could have handled their illnesses with a positive attitude. But I could tell you, just being in a healthier facility is the last thing you want to do, you know, with the time that you have on this earth. You see, that's why I, I tell you, it's like, I spew from you when I come to this thing. I'm looking, I'm again reading, and I mentioned it earlier. Emergency response in 10 minutes nationwide. And I, of course, all of these stories are flooding back to me now. Yeah. But the same the arrow situation, if something happens to you yeah. there, what is the likelihood that you can get an ambulance coming to you in 10 minutes if you if it's coming from yeah. Grandy? Yeah. I don't even think the, well, with the fire station, or they still have to transport you to Grandy Hospital if something serious happens. And if they can't deal with you there. Yeah. They then have to transfer you to either Mount Tope or, well, usually it's Mount Tope. But think about how many lives have probably been lost because of not think, being able to yeah, get as in, think medical about, assistance. And think about how many preventable deaths, you know, that we could have had. I mean, and then we talk about it, and I'm thinking, you remember Christopher Phillips? You know? <sighs> Sorry. That is, yeah, a, no, that is a tough it one is. for me. It's always been a tough one because I, that was, you remember when Rowley said he draws the line here? It's not that I draw my line, but I did not, I honestly did not understand I, how I thought people were I, not. I, you see, I thought, we thought, we thought that was enough. If we, you know, we thought that was enough. Who did it have to be for us to say nah? That was too much. Like, who did it honestly have to be? It's KFC. What? That's what it has to be. Because that's the because that, if you if you're looking right now, that's what it is. It's not a oh, whole. Oh you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, so, that is that is the that is the. That's what it gets in you now. Yeah. KFC. and and you wonder for these serious issues like this, and Sorry. I see it. I see on my newsfeed. I see the people, my friends, my colleagues. Yeah. Who are very silent on anything I post about the PEP, but I read their comments and I read when they have real life experiences in Trinidad and I read, boy, I went to the um, licensing office and I ain't got my license. Now the time yeah. this one wasn't here today. 
to have to come back and yeah. see. And I read, boy, went to the hospital and I had to wait a whole, how much hours. And, and I wonder, I say, I think to myself, you, you're living the experience. You're, yeah. You, it's not that what I am seeing is any different from what you are experiencing. So what is stopping you from saying, I can't take this anymore? Yeah, and what about the ones who actually, you know, when they're so celebratory because they get through? What is that about? Exactly, and, and, and you see it too. You see people posting, anybody knows anyone in, in, in yeah. uh, any doctors in Port of Spain, you know, anybody knows any doctors in Monto, Port of Health Center. And, I mean, of course, it's sad that that's the way, that's we the get way to get expedited service, yeah. but... It's a reality. Yeah. If you have to know somebody to get through. Not even that, Felicia. It reached the point when, when, because of the condition that I was suspected to have it, so basically what I came in, they were like, you know what, you're going to be warded regardless because they can't let me leave with what I what the suspicion was, with the injury that I came with. So while I'm there, propping up on another chair in another room, <laughs> um, it's about 2 o'clock in the morning. So the shift has changed, and I'm hearing the doctor um, calling around, like yeah. the nurses in the wards, and they're saying, I have this patient, so, 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 this is what she's suspected to have, so we have to keep she, but the ward she scheduled for full. You think you could do my favor and hold she? What does that mean, hold her? As in hold in the ward, as in you have a bed for her, even though she's not scheduled for the bed. So, because the water I'm supposed to be in, it's mm -hmm. full. They can't take me. They can't hold me. But I, but they can't let me leave because of what I come with. Yeah. Right? So, they were asking around, you know, on kindnesses. And that's the thing you see. You see a lot of doctors there and nurses there. And it's, it's we literally survive based on the kindnesses of professional strangers. So, when you're in your hospital, it's professional strangers. When and it is that... They have so much pressure because you as the same thing you say is like mm -hmm. people calling around and they're asking them and they're saying it's like could you check this one for yeah. me? Could you check that one for me? And it's like I don't go through all that nonsense. Just to see somebody. It's like no wonder. I always used to wonder before I got involved in people, I used to wonder what was the what was the reason that when you walked into Port of Spain or any hospital in yeah. always mostly Port of Spain in general. I've seen okay. to me that has been the worst. I've never really experienced San Fernando, but there's always a full, full waiting room. People sitting yeah, yeah. on the ground, people standing up, they're leaning on a bench. And it's always sad to look at because it's a lot of, yeah. usually a lot of elderly people, some young children, and it's not anything that you would want for yourself or for somebody that you care about. And understanding now that one, it was, it's probably one of two, not probably, it's one of two things. Yeah. One, inefficient management of the hospital yeah. because you have to know how many beds you're able how many beds you hold how yeah. many patients that you can take yeah how many nurses and doctors you have on staff mm -hmm. how many um trolleys that you have to transfer mm -hmm. patients from from vehicles or um from the ambulance to the the hospital mm -hmm. bed so clearly there's some disconnect there between how they run the hospitals yes. and how the patients are being treated right. as one. Right. And then two, the fact that a lot of the people who go to the general hospitals probably could have had what they needed addressed, dealt with in a healthcare health center. center. That's closer to them, that would be more affordable, that would be more convenient. That would have the drugs that they need. I went after I got in my accident two weeks ago, I, the doctor prescribed some tablets for me. I, was, I went to the health center by mistake. I went to the health center by mistake because I actually thought I was going to the health net. Yeah. yeah. But apparently they moved and it's now a health center. What? Only while I was there. Are you serious? <laughs> Only while I was there, I realized that it was the health center. I was already there, so... You see how irritating the things that are changing? It's it like, look at the things here. that are changing. It's like, everything staying the same in, in, in this place, you know? You pass by as one. It's like about five blocks falling off of a wall somewhere after a year. But look at the things that are changing. It, but 
I just want to applaud it. Could her, in me, I I am sometimes I'm not very observant, and I apparently that changed from health not years ago. Yeah. So I don't know. But I ended up staying and went through the doctor. His 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 diagnosis of me was literally watching at me. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where do you have your pains? And I'm just there, I'm like, Lord, look how I'm just gonna get yeah. Just like basic, basic, yeah. basic treatment. It's like, well, I'm having some back pains because of the accident and whatnot. He prescribes tablets to me. And before he even finishes, he says, most likely the dispensary won't have these. So you will have to go to St. James Hospital. I said, burr? <laughs> burr? Yeah. <laughs> so I had to leave. I'm telling you, yeah. I'm in pain. I had to leave. Yeah. I had to go to a meeting. Leave the meeting in pain to go to St. James Hospital to get the tablet. And that doesn't even touch on the point of the fact that some of the drugs now is not even the real thing. Anyway, so guys, I know we said we wanted to take some calls. But you know, we you realize we needed to vent. Yeah. So we ventilated of it. It's an entire real venting session about healthcare. Mm -hmm. And I <laughs> I'm going to get a little angry here uh, because something happened, and uh, we do want to open the phone lines. Uh, but four six nine four three four nine. Please um, call in. Call Give in. us your experience with anything in the healthcare system, anything that you think can be improved, anything in our policies. That anything you can at apply. all that you want the audience to know. Anything, because just by you calling, is you getting, you becoming an active participant. You know in your nation's affairs. And that's what this platform is about. That's what Janice wanted Frontline to be. And um, we welcome all calls. We appreciate you all giving us a session. You see, here we are. Oh, we're getting a we, call. We're getting a call. Seems like it's an overseas number as well. Hello, good night, you're on Frontline. Hello, good night, just gonna look here. Hi, Kenneth. Hi, Kenneth. Oh. <laughs> Kenneth is the... Hi. Oh, the chair of the okay. advisory council. This is Felicia and Sara. Hi. Hi, Felicia. Hi, Sara. Good evening. Good evening. Wait, are you calling for Frontline? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm calling. For okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing he was calling. Yeah, <laughs> maybe I had an assignment. But... Okay, go ahead. No, I mean, I am understanding the challenges that exist. What do you, in, in what, uh huh, continue? I, no, uh, no, I, I'm hearing the challenges that they exist, but the PP is basically working on <coughs> healthcare policy to drive clarity to. Can you hear me? Yes, we, yes, can. we can. Live and clear, you just go ahead and speak. Hello? Yeah, okay. Um, what I was saying is we're trying to drive clarity to understanding the challenges right. and also be beginning to put structure in place so that w what we end up with is on a, on a full assessment of the resource. For instance, mm -hmm. what is the service structure in each facility by facility type and what that should consist of? We thinking in terms of, or <clears throat> we are documenting in terms of electronic intake and patient registration, mm -hmm. triage, mm -hmm. which is something that will mitigate the people sitting around in the in the room. In the rooms, right? Room. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> of course, waiting room and bathroom facilities. Right. Um, from a service standpoint, we can't have people sitting on the floor. Exactly. We can't have people waiting to go to a bathroom that normally they cannot go to. Right. An emergency room with private ER patient stations, electronic access to patient electronic medical records, which is a, a standard thing where somebody comes to the, the uh, comes to the waiting room. Yeah, and then they sell out then. all our secrets. Yeah, huh? <laughs> just because just now you know you're gonna hear somebody from the yellow and said you're the red and ready party talking about waiting room facilities, huh? You know how this yeah, but their problem has, has constantly been implementation. Always. And Always. that's where the PEP is different. To implement. Yeah. Right. So effective, giving effective service means you must be able to do the capacity planning that, that you can understand the size of your facility and the population that it can serve. Mm -hmm. And we need to configure the available services to constituencies by urban, rural, um, 
you know, hill territory and coastal territory, because each of those needs are different. Yeah, right. People, for instance, live close to forests, will could suffer from snake bite, whereas in Port of Spain, unless the zoo get away, <laughs> you're not going to get so many snake bite people. You're right. Getting in transportation. Mm -hmm. um, and, and actually the medical professional distribution by population within regions. So some kind of survey is necessary to understand the capacity and resource planning for training. And who we got to train and the degree and levels of training. For staffing and resource planning, it is the intent of the PC to fully staff these facilities to eight hour shifts, 365 days per year. 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. and 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. and one eight-hour shift, 365 days per year, 11 p.m. to 8 a.m., which, which of course can be a lighted duty shift. Right. Now there are some other things that touch this. What are the housing, housekeeping services in place? What is the bed count in each? A patient facility is adequate. Can what I, is the I think, supply? I mean, from the time you started, and guys, if for those who don't know, the advisory council is that board that takes all 21 of these policies here and this is where people get confused huh? they see our policies and they say oh that that just them bullet points what you'll have the truth is we have a team that's being led by kenneth luke and what he's giving you there is the real drill down point by point bullet by bullet yeah. of how we are going to yeah reinvent the healthcare re revolutionize and do and redo the healthcare system. And can kind of, I want to thank, you, thank for you, yeah, for, for giving us that insight. Actually, I should have actually called you earlier and asked you to call in. We're gonna um cut you now to take a couple more calls if we can squeeze any in. But I really want to thank you for giving us that insight into how we are going to address these all of these issues that Sarah and I brought yeah. up. About the health and system. you you gave people a lot of food for thought in about in a three minute bite it's so long and i'm sure people are gonna have to i know once this live is over we're gonna have to actually go back and you're gonna and have read to play the comments and, and read the and comments address. and listen to it and think about it so thank you very much kenneth um for your contribution tonight all right thank have you same good to you good night all right, anybody else, if you do want to call in, like we said? Right, the number is 469-4349. Yeah, that's a lot of calls. 469-4349. We're talking about the healthcare system. And I just the things that Kenneth is saying there, it tells you the amount of depth that we are going into to make sure that when we say we want to give healthcare to mm -hmm. our population yes. and first world healthcare what we really mean it's looking at all the issues we pointed out having yes. to wait in the waiting room having to deal with uh, a snake bite versus a, another bite and right. we get a call. call hello good night you're on front line sarah and felicia here yes good night felicia good night. and sarah good night, good night. And yes uh, you know i was in there with um some heart issues Okay. And there was no medication on the wards in Mount Hope. Right. And another thing is, during the weekend, people required angiogram and um, ultrasounds. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they don't operate over the weekend. And is it that you yeah. had to get an ambulance to get to where you were coming from? No, 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 no. I, I needed an angiogram okay. while I was there. Right. And they don't do that over the weekend. We have to get a stress test. Any any machinery have to be operated. Mm -hmm. People who operate them, they don't work on weekends. Right. Wow. Really so you wow. have to wait until Monday. In the, yes, in, the, in this car, this is the biggest hospital we have in Trinidad. This is craziness. And when you when you hear the statistics in terms of of you know our health care and you know our health diseases and lifestyle diseases, you would think that priority would go into these tests at least in terms of, of yeah. Andrew. Exactly. Yeah. Cola, where are you Which calling from? What area is this? I'm calling from the Cova area. Cova you know, area. Thank you for so joining us. The amount of money, the amount of money spent in healthcare over the years mm -hmm. and they can't get nothing right. Yeah. When Philip talks, when Philip started talking, it's just ideas coming out of his mouth like crazy. Right. And you know, it's nice to hear it, 
but they must get vexed because this stinking pain and teeth in it. You understand? <laughs> Tell them to shut up. But like what Kenneth said, their problem will always be implementation. And you can always have an idea, but you, not because you have the idea means you know how to put it into action. And, all and that's yeah, where, yeah. you see, their whole blueprint is, is how much I could get from in my pockets. What we studying is to take the money and actually invest it in the people. Yeah. I actually went to align, align my tires and I was talking to some people from Tobago and uh -huh. gave them some flat, you know, yeah. gave them some flat. And she was saying, you know, oh, how is this first care health, uh, first world health care going to happen? Uh -huh. I woke up in Tobago. I said, ma'am, you just call that office and they will tell you what is going to happen. Yeah. And they have people in Tobago. So anywhere I go, I tell people of the PEP and tell people, spreading news. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. from the the, yeah, the nonsense, the back and all. We're talking about healthcare. We're talking about ensuring that people can get their tests when they need it. We're talking about people having safe transportation. We're talking about people that if you need to go somewhere, you are secure in your knowledge that they're going to be treated. And, and, and Cola, did you get through at least? No, I didn't. Did you see? I never got any tests done, nothing done. My wife had to bring tablets on the ward. They took away my tablets and gave it to other people. What? So imagine, I had to buy tablets for people in the hospital. You understand? And, and, and the sad thing is, you're calling, you're calling from Coover. Coover, where yeah. the first thing is that Coover, they just spent, how much How much was it? Not they Almost spent, them, a they had to pay it back. Is that the, the Chinese built it? A, a, a hospital, a Coover Children's Hospital that is just withering away in Coover. Money that could have been pumped into upgrading the Mount Hope, Holy Spain and San Fernando facilities so that you will not have to wait until Monday and probably never get your result, your test results. Because as you're saying, you never even got that. But Cola, how, how but um, I, I want to thank you for, for, for sharing that. Um, and um, we appreciate, we appreciate your call and we appreciate you spreading the word and, and letting people know about, about PEP. Progressive Empowerment yeah, Party. You, to you and Felicia and Fini Mama, everybody working hard. Um, the word is spreading. Mm -hmm. People are fighting out. I went to some lady in a back road somewhere and she said, PP, yeah, yeah, everybody knows what PP is. Yay! <laughs> and, and it's spreading to Dory. Hi, right, right. good news. Thank you very much for calling. Okay. All right. Okay, bye. Take care. Right. Good night. Wow. I mean, we we glad that we take any call, but I realize we, we, we have to actually take our breather and be incensed by what, you know, we're hearing. Oh, yes, so we're going to call our darling. Yes. Limbs. Limbs. Right, she's our caretaker for the... Oh, it's been North Sinzans West. Hello. Hi, Lemma. Sarah yeah, here. Hi. Um, and Felicia on front line and um, ready to unload your story. Go ahead. For those just know Lemma, before you start, for those who don't know, Lemma is the caretaker for the St. Anne's North, no, Port Spain North St. Anne's West constituency, or St. Anne's East. She was recently featured on the 411. Yeah, she was on the 411 last week, and uh, she's now going to give us her own experience as it pertains to her daughter. Yes. When she had to go through the public health care um, services. System. Go country. ahead, Lemma. Okay. It was a weekday, um, my daughter was in school, and a group of children were playing, and she tripped over a lot of talent she fell. Um, and she broke her left arm. Right. And the school, from the time they saw the, how she made a lot of noise, they realized how serious it was. And they... Right, to the St. James facility, right? Uh-huh. And the doctor there, well, they saw her immediately because she's a child. Right. And it was a severe uh, injury. Um, they saw, as soon as I reached, this was around after 10 in the morning, I got there at the 11. Mm -hmm. And from the time I reached there, the doctor was like, Mommy, I am not an orthopedic surgeon, but I can tell you for sure that that arm is broken and you're going to have to carry a mouth. So there's no buts about it, you have to go mouth. Right, so after 11, you're shuttling down to go down to Mount Hope. Yeah. Right, so uh-huh. we left 
smaller. We lost it. They said they, we couldn't take the ambulance because there was no ambulance close by. So, uh huh. So she's in pain all of this time? Yeah? She's in pain all of this time? They gave her pain medication. So she okay. was both in pain but just with the discomfort. Right. So they put the ambulance there and they pain medication, which was fun and all. Right, okay. so we have a four-year-old with a broken hand on her way after 11 in the morning after yeah. seeing one facility being rejected and transferred to another. Okay, right, yeah. so we on there now to Mount Hope. Uh-huh. Right, so we have to take our personal vehicle to go right. Mount Hope. And when we got there, which was around after 12, we did the whole procedure here, the uh, and uh, the rest is for the patient, they are the patient. And you sit on you you basically wait and we waited. For how long? For how long? We were, we were there from twenty past twelve and we did not see a doctor until around five past six in the evening. Oh my god, oh yeah. So what were you doing all of this time? Right. Every two minutes I'll get up and speak to the doctor and ask them, you know, um I'd have to remind them to give us pain medication because of the injury. And how was how was your, your 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 child? I mean, she's four. She's in this yeah. room in pain. I mean, how how was she as you were monitoring her? She she was she was brave. She didn't cry much uh -huh. or swallow anything because of the sling. Right. But you know, she wanted to go home, and it was it was it was too long a process for a child so small because she wouldn't know what to do with pain. As I told you, you know, okay, suck it up. I could deal with it, but and for something so and for something so critical as well, because I mean a broken arm is not the same as my broken toe where I could jump up yeah. and still play mass. It's a broken limb that is yeah. pain. And, and she's a child. Yes, that's yes, a so baby. I still call a four year old baby. Exactly. Baby. Yeah. And what when I spoke to one of the doctors he said that yes it is serious, but it's not critical. So that's why we were allowed to wait. So they, they are assessed by how serious. Oh. But suppose if I went in the ambulance and I came out screaming and crying, oh my God, my child, my child, my child, help, 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 they would have rushed her in immediately and then so the trick is to get the ambulance, but then it did get the ambulance. Oh my God, no. How, and it's hard to see a child go through that too. I'm I sure. wanted to try for her. Right. And and I mean you and you and your husband both of you all had to take work days off basically to get this done. Yeah. Same thing Lizzie was saying. And you all yeah. had other kids. So what what was the shuffle for you to have to be held hostage there? Um, what happened to your other kids? Who? Well, at that point when we were when we realized we'd be there whole evening, I had to call my mom and ask her to pick up the other two for me. Uh huh. And she said no problem. She was saying she said you know make sure I'm stay with her. And right. she was going to pick up the other two, she would feed them everything. And after six, after seeing the doctor, yeah. um, who was the specialist, the orthopedic specialist, yeah. we, um, he told us that he would wait two more hours to um, have someone completely empty in order to do the procedure. So we had to wait a further two hours. So basically the procedure was supposed to be done like half past eight. Uh-huh. So I told the doctor, okay, I live right there, Selma. Uh -huh. I am going to carry my child home. Uh -huh. And I need to bathe and change and all of these different things. And we will come back. Okay, all right. And and she eventually, she, she got the procedure and she's doing fine, right? Yeah, and we left there. We came back for the party and we still waited until after... Nine and we left there half past ten, minutes to eleven. I remember, night. I remember that night when we asked if you were home and it was really, yeah. really late that you messaged. And you know what was the upsetting part the most too? Was that at that hour the hospital pharmacy is already closed, so you now have to go and hunt for a pharmacy, pharmacy. that is in front. Oh Jesus! Because you want to make sure your child have the medi pain medication for when she wakes up in the night. Yeah. You so the only available pharmacy is Super Farm. How ironic is that, right? You see why we enrage, you see why we fed up, you see why the whole segment ended up being about healthcare. Lemma, thank you very much for that story. We, we even apologize for you having to rehash it.
you know because yeah. it, it's not an easy thing i mean when you when when you look back on the video and you, you would see the frowns on this <laughs> my faces um yeah. even though we try not to and um thank you very much limbs thank for you them, okay, uh, right them. give all up to the yeah, thank you. Okay, take care. Bye. Okay, bye. <sighs> take a drink, right? Share the live. Clearly not some. Roll I did the wrong thing. What? Praise the Lord for patience. Guys, we have five more minutes before we wrap up the program. I mean, you've heard it. We we have we would leave room for one more call if anybody wants to call in. Yeah. At this point, though. I do want to, again, we spoke a lot about the issues. The mm -hmm. solutions is what we need to be focusing on as well. Yes. He, he's not just here to dig up all the problems and say, well, yeah, and, and blame the party opposition or blame the gov present government. Yeah, it's their fault. And I, I'm, I meant to know words to say it's their fault because 56 years, in and out, in and out, pain and UNC, pain and UNC, and the child had to sit in pain with a broken arm for more than 12 hours before she got full attention. attention what is our money paying for why was there not a facility why was there not a doctor to attend to her why was she not classified as important enough what i'm not saying that there aren't other things that are critical but like Kenneth Luke was saying, you need to know how you are running a hospital and that she had to go through that and comparing it to, to what Carla Jean had to experience yeah. in three hours when she just, she was just, she, I think she, she was feeling lightheaded or something like that. Yeah, she was and she was driving and she almost passed out so she pulled over before anything compare happened. That, compare that to a broken arm on a four-year-old child. And These are things yeah. that should not be happening and the thing is, is that you know we have examples that work you know we have we, there are companies you know global companies like gbg you look it up where um countries invest in healthcare and insurance for all of their citizens so that something like this never happens and you know why because they value life they value you they value the citizens. They don't tell you we're going to raise health to charge. They're not going to say we need to bail out National Insurance Board, but we need to pay taxes even though we're going to run out of money. You understand? They're not going to say that. Our citizens, we need health care. They invest in health care. And the thing is, is that with Trinidad, like we are the third wealthiest nation in the Western Hemisphere. So something like universal health care or having a, a, a global insurance company to... Um, that would surely give us a reduced rate because I mean we are one point something million not counting the immigrants not counting the ones that we can't access when we have to do our census because you anybody who knows research you know we'll capture everybody right so think about it and the thing is, is that we literally have literal examples parallel examples happening in countries and our neighbors at this moment Carla Jean was just a perfect example to show us hey this is what could happen in 2018 this year you know as we begin to wrap up if we don't have any other callers i wanna i had started earlier saying and i don't want to end the show angry so i'm not going to dip into my angry feelings because we I are the party of hope and opportunity yes i got into a very loud argument this week <laughs> and I was going to save this story for the entire executive this Saturday. I got into the uh, into an, an argument uh -huh. with the owner of jo Joe's Pizza oh, and a customer <laughs> and a customer in 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 the establishment. Uh -huh. I mean he, he, I believe he was the owner. He was he was not a bad person but I was mostly my anger was mostly geared at the customer who I overheard them speaking about politics and I, being a brand ambassador for Being the chairman of the Progressive Empowerment Party. Being the chairman of the Progressive Empowerment Party. I saw it fit to say, okay, y'all are saying PNM and it is, is nonsense, UNC is nonsense. Here, we have an option. And as soon as I mentioned it, the customer immediately cut it down. Oh, for a bit of an accent. Oh, that cut my... Say, where's your proof of all these things? Well, I hear that. 
long story short, we got into talking about fixing the country and the policies and the programs and the systems that we need to fix this country. Right. And I mentioned to him, yes. you know, why not make an well, this is not about healthcare, but yes. it touches on, on giving hope and opportunity. Why not give a minimum wage earner the opportunity to own a home? Why not give, and, and if we have to relate it to healthcare, yeah. why not give the poor man the ability to go into a hospital and get the same service that you would go yes. and pay thousands of dollars for in West Show and St. Augustine and St. Clair and all of these yes. other places that are designed to take your money? Because you know you can't chance it in the public. Yeah. Why not give them these things? And the customer's response. Well, actually, the response was, why should my tax-paying dollars go towards that? And I felt an anger bubbling wow. inside of me. It was bubbling inside of me. And I wanted to cry because I realized I was angry because we say that we don't know the solution. And we say that the Trinidad has a problem. But the problem with Trinidad is really us. We are such a selfish people. Think about if the poor man could access health care. The poor man could own a home. What does that mean for the country as a whole? As a country, we would be all progressing together. Why, why, why mm -hmm. are you opposed to taking your tax paying dollars to go towards making something mm -hmm. as healthcare and home ownership affordable and available? But you would rather that money go to whatever to, else to uh, feeding criminals in jail. And even if you find yourself from a, from a privileged situation, why it is that you have to use the resources that you have within your privilege to be raped by the hospital with respect to the, to, the, to the fees. You don't think you deserve better. You don't think you're worth more. And I mean, however you, you have your income and whoever, whatever savings that you have, it's, it's, it, you should want for yourself and your savings should mean something more than, you know, if, if I'm in a serious situation, I can bail myself out. And then what happens after? After you spend all your money? Say something happens and, you know, say whatever, whoever we have is like, they're they in the private health care, but hey, you know what, they run out of money, we need to transfer them. Oh, we can't afford it anymore, we can't get them in public. What's going to happen? And this is where the Progressive Empowerment Party members come in. We, we are seeing something, we are seeing a picture, we are seeing a roadmap to something that we truly reject. And instead of outrightly rejecting it, we are trying to be part of the solution. And at least we have a platform for you to start and to come on board we not we 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 trying to help relieve the pressure where you don't feel alone. You have myself, you have Felicia, you have Philip, you have Tony, you have everybody who you plan to vote into to be the Progressive Empowerment Party for this next year. Yes. And you have you have the choice for that. So as we're gonna close Felicia, is just gonna do some basic housekeeping before we sign up for the night. Folks, thank you for Thank you joining us on this unscripted hour normally you know we have our little scripts totally unscripted yeah went off not for me. clearly we went off no no, no <laughs> we, were, we were on topic of what yeah. we wanted to discuss coming out of janice falling sick yeah. but not on the you know the whole inside look into the pp but things happen for a reason and i was really glad that we yeah. had the opportunity to yeah. discuss this tonight because we heard how bad it is and we heard how much better it can be you heard kenneth give the simplest solutions to fix the problems that are so big right now in our health and that was system. the tip of the iceberg when it comes to kenneth tip of the yeah, iceberg. you come on a saturday you would hear to engage us it's like you would hear a lot more so this upcoming Saturday, which would be the 28th of April, we resume our noon meetings right here at 19 Sanmo Avenue. You are, this is a glimpse of our office. We mm -hmm. have more space. But definitely come down this Saturday. We want to hear you. We want to get your feedback. All of the people who have watched our videos for yes. a year. Yes. Plus who have heard what we had to say yes. that gentleman who called i did not get his name but i'm not sure if i met him maybe we did maybe we did not this is your opportunity to get involved you've never none of us have been politically involved before but no. this is the time 
the time to stand up for Trinidad and Tobago is now. Saturday, join us, 19 Stanmore Avenue, Avenue, Port of Spain. From 12 noon. We do this every single Saturday. And I tell people, two years ago, my Saturdays were reserved for beach, linemen, and partying, and beers. Yeah. I do this as a young woman because this is more important than any of those things. In a couple of years, if we don't fix the country, it have no more like when I'm partying and base. Yeah. It have trying to get on a boat to get out of here or plane. So don't waste the opportunity yes. to add your voice to ours. We need you. We want you here. Come. We usually have snacks and cake and ice cream and chocolates and, and boats and anything. Come buy your cups, your merchandise, but mostly come and hear real Interact solutions. with the team. Interact with the team and hear what real solutions sound like. Sarah, impromptu. Thank you, thank you yes. very much. You know, you did I tell you how this happened over no, lunch? Philip no. was like, I said, well, we just left the hospital with uh -huh. Janice, Philip, Sean, and myself. So, well, Philip, you know, you have to join me on front lines. And he's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm like, okay, um, why don't get Sarah and Abby? I said, brilliant. And okay. he called you, and, and you came, and you came through really well, yeah. Janice. Darling, lover, I really hope we yeah. made you proud. Yeah. And uh, we want to toast to your health. We are going to toast to your health. An orange toast. Orange to I'm sorry, it wasn't the actual pep cup. Because Guys, it's sold out. It's sold out. We have to drink from the unbranded cups now because even down to that, people buy out our cups. Thank you very much for giving Thank us you your time and attention. Sorry for starting late and sorry for ending late. But again, really appreciate you guys being here. And Sarah, being with us. thank you for coming. Thank and you. stay safe, Trinidad. And stay safe and see you next week. Good night.